welcome to today's episode of the Group Therapy Podcast. Today we have a uh, wrestler, deathmatch wrestler, the mayor of Poundtown himself. <laughs> yeah. Gigi Jacobs. Gigi, tell us about yourself, sir. Oh, well, like you said, I'm the mayor of Poundtown. Uh, I do. I'm breaking into death matches, but, you know, I was uh, trained by Cody Hawk. I'm based out of Cincinnati, Ohio, and uh, I've only been doing it for like two years. So, yeah, that's just me in a nutshell. I'm the queer Billy of Poundtown, USA. There you go. It, it, it's fun because I met you through through Maddie. And uh, you're, you're, I love Brent. Oh, he's he's a he's a super dude, super cool dude. I've known him for a few years. I don't get to hang out with him as much as I used to, but work schedules and stuff like that. But we yeah. still try to get up to see wrestling, and we try to hang out sporadically. So, yeah, he's the one to talk to me. He's like, man, he goes, you want to go up to GCW in Detroit? And I was like, I don't know, man. He goes, I guess I got the tickets. I'll take. And then we met you. So, oh yeah, no. Um, so Brent has been a huge supporter of me even before I started wrestling. Uh, so when I was like training and doing cameraman work and shit, uh, I made shirts, bootleg shirts, uh, like, uh, these Bull Nakano and these Aja Kong shirts. Um, I've made a Macho Man shirt. I'm actually wearing it right now, but also like a Tope Suicida. They're just like, wrestling shirts i would want to wear so yeah. like i put them out and brent bought like as soon as i started putting them out he followed me on twitter and like was supporting me and uh i actually met him for the first time at that gcw event oh, and i was just like holy shit <laughs> So that was that was wild and yeah every time i see him now i'm just like this is my day one. <laughs> he, he he's like, oh, you gotta meet this guy. And he told me about his t-shirt. He he comes in the shop sometimes. He was wearing a bull Nakano shirt. He's like, yeah, this is one of the shirts he made. I'm like, yeah, oh, that's awesome. So, so uh, I, I, someone uh, someone sent me a photo of Matt Tremont wearing it in one of his matches, and I'm like, hell yeah! And then uh, Malcolm Monroe the third MM3, he wears uh, my Aja Kong shirt pretty often in his death matches. So, so it's just cool to see. How did you get into to making this the t shirts? Uh I've always uh I've always wanted to make shirts and uh like the all the wrestling shirts I own are like they're not from pro wrestling tees or uh WWE shop. They're these like weird independent brands that put out their own shit. And, like, one of them is Stash Pages. Uh, my cat is just bugging me. Uh, <laughs> I had to run my dogs off because they got to go upstairs when I film. Because if I if I don't, they will not leave me alone the entire episode yeah. that I'm recording. Well, this one might as well be a dog. Her name's Iggy Pop. Iggy Pop. Just, Jesus. But, uh... <laughs> now, um... What, what was I saying? Where you got the yeah. t-shirts at? Where, where? Oh yeah, um, Stash Pages is like a company I get a bunch of shirts from. Uh, this guy Matt Biven, they're just like independent people that put out like either replicas of old like merch that you would have gotten in the nineties, or like new stuff, but. I don't know. I saw like them doing it. And I'm like, well, I have ideas. So like, I just kind of put, you know, pen to paper, ink to shirt and uh, put out my own shirts. I actually have some designs that I want to put out again. I'm going to reissue uh, the Bull Nakano and Aja Kong shirts, just different colorways. And like, I have a dirty Dutch Mantel shirt that I want to put out, but I just don't know how well that will do. It's a pretty niche kind yeah, of thing. Like hand people, a handful of people that remember Dirty Dutch Mantel. Everybody knows Zeb Coulter, but they don't. Yeah. They'd be like, who the hell is this? Like, what? What is 
but you know, maybe I'll just throw it up uh, like on my Brain Buster tees or something as just like some random shirt. But it, it's just something I liked doing. Uh, kind of fell out of it, just like with wrestling, kind of taking over and like traveling every weekend. But there are a couple like uh, the brand was called Dangerously Divine Apparel. I'm a big John Waters and Divine fan. Yeah, and so I want to take like these classic black and white photos of like wrestlers and divine them, uh, where I put the divine makeup and wig and everything on, do just a whole series of that. But there, there, there's so many good old school T-shirts that just don't exist anymore, and mm -hmm. you know, like. The, you know, you got the Pound Town t-shirt that looks like the Bad Street USA. Yep. That's a classic. I love that shirt. <laughs> well, like, I mean, the reason I even did that was, like, it just made sense. Like, Pound Town USA. Oh, like, Bad Street USA. Cool. Michael P.S. Hayes, the Fabulous Freebirds. They were fucking rad. Like, they sold, they sold, they pushed merch. And everyone loved their Bad Street USA shirts. Everyone wanted one. So I was just like, I'm taking it. <laughs> Poundtown USA. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Well, like, uh, I was at uh, Flop House. This was like a year or so ago. But these people didn't even really stay for the show. Like, I did a little pre show match, and then I was on the main card in a scramble. But. These people were just standing outside the, it's like a brewery, um, and they saw my little match and heard the Pound Town, saw the Pound Town shirt. They all ended up buying shirts. They're like, ah, we don't even really like wrestling, but this Pound Town, like, this is amazing. And I'm like, I know, thank you. <laughs> like, they're they're so good, and they they. You know, for for you know, lack of a better term, knockoffs. They're they're pretty high quality and they look really good. I mean, Maddie wears yeah. the um, it's the one he was wearing the last time he was in. Um, uh, it looks it looks like a, a an old school throwback shirt of like a like a Starcade shirt or something. I thought I think that's one you did. I'm not 100, percent but oh, I, I, oh, it's one of my Rick shirts. Rude on the front. No, that wasn't me. That wasn't you? Okay. No. But no, he, he wears his, uh, some of the other one, like I said, he wears his Bull Nakano shirt, his Aja Kong shirt. Stop. Well, um, Nick Manwa, he always wears his, uh, my shirts. Like, uh, it seems like whenever I see him, he's always wearing one of my shirts. And I'm just like, ah, thank you. Like he was saying the other day, the last time I saw him, he was wearing this one shirt where it's like purple and it's a graphic tee, but uh, he's like, yeah, usually I just wear this around the house because it's so soft. He's like, it's just such a soft shirt. It's comfortable. But he's like, it really fit this fit. So I decided to wear it today. And I was like, well, it makes me happy. That's so comfortable. Like I'm doing something right. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. No, have, have you ever gotten like a cease and desist or anything on any of those? No. Or you just do a small enough batch that don't give a shit? I haven't, like, uh, a lot of them. So when I was doing them, I wasn't doing them as pre-orders. So I got, like, 50 at a time. And then, like, once all 50 sold out, that was it. So, like, yeah, these shirts, there's only 50 of each in existence. Until, so, until, until but you... I've sold one to one of each of those shirts like across the world, so it's pretty cool. Heck yeah, hell yeah! Now, so how old were you when you got into wrestling? Like, so like I've always been a fan of it. Uh, probably like ninety eight is when I got into it. I was born ninety three. Um. I just remember seeing Macho Man with Gorgeous George on television and falling in love with it. Uh, I remember watching like Owen and Ken Shamrock and Steve Blackman in the Lion Dens matches. Mm -hmm. Like those were very, very cool to me. 
Um, but yeah, I've always wanted to be a wrestler. Uh, my mom like got me when I was in kindergarten or something. Uh, how to be a wrestler for dummies. And like, I would always like read it, look at it, all that jazz. But um, I actually didn't start training or doing anything like involved with the business until I moved out to Cincinnati in 2016. And I think it was like, I want to say 2017, 2018, I signed up with uh, NWF. And uh, I was there for a month and a half. And I broke my shoulder. Uh, then depression, uh, quarantine. Uh, and towards the end of quarantine, I was like, you know what? I don't want to get old and not be like, oh, did I try? You know? So I looked it up, uh, found Cody Hawk, and uh, went back and started training and got into the business when I was 28. And so, yeah, I've just always been a fan, though. Like, just, uh, I've always kept up with it. I've had the WWE Network when it came out. I've always been a fan of deathmatch wrestling. Like, uh, early, mid-2000s. Um, I remember I would always watch on YouTube CZW deathmatches. Like, just random ones. And I was a big fan of, like, Wife Beater, Toby Klein, and, like, uh, people like that. Just, like, these brutes that would almost smash you with a bunch of shit. <laughs> like, yeah, wrestling! Wrestling! <laughs> See, I got I got into deathmatch wrestling early, because I'm, I'm old, and, and uh, we were tape trading back in the day. And I remember getting the King of the Death matches over there in Japan with the... Uh, um, Cactus Jack, Terry Funk. Yeah. Oh, this is, then, then somebody goes, have you found FMW? I'm like, what's FMW? Well, here you go. And then I, was, I watched yeah. that. I recorded it. And then I made a copy for a friend and then a copy for a friend. And then, you know, like 20 generations later, people are looking at fuzzy versions of a copy. Well, like, uh, it's funny. I actually, uh, the shirt I'm going to switch into after uh, training tonight is an FMW shirt. I'm a huge FMW fan. Huge, oh, yeah. huge. Uh, but and so, like, 2024 is like the year I really want to like do more death matches. And I've talked to companies, certain companies that do death matches. So, 2024, I'm expecting to do quite a few more. Uh, I already know of a couple matches I'm supposed to be having. I'm not going to say anything yet just because, no. yeah, it's too early, but uh. Yeah, no, I'm. It's why I got into wrestling. Like, uh, it's why I wanted to do it. See, so many people get into deathmatch wrestling, and then hope that they can go into regular wrestling. You're going from regular wrestling into deathmatch wrestling. The other, yeah, way. no, uh, like I love just like like right now I have playing on my TV. Uh, what is this? This is WCCW, just some random episode, and the Freebirds are beating the shit out of uh, one of the Von Erics. But uh, I just, I don't know. I love wrestling. I love storytelling. Uh, that, that's why I like it. I like, uh, I think death matches, there can definitely be stories told, and there can be a lot of fun to be had there. And I don't know. I just, I, Remington Roar, you know who he yeah, is? Yeah, yeah. So, um, I met him early on uh, in working shows and whatnot. And I asked him, I was like, what would you recommend? Like, when should one get into death matches? And uh, him, Hoodfoot, Schwartzy, Randy West, they were all like, have at least bare minimum two years of wrestling and like you're not just drizzling shits like you're actually wrestling and getting better and i was like okay cool uh i didn't wait quite two years but i have yet to do a death match in a ring um so hopefully that changes in 2024 i don't mind doing no ring 
matches. I think they're a lot of fun. Uh, it's more of a spectacle, I feel. Yeah. Um, I've had uh, cops actually come in and apparently so we brawled outside and like I just have Joey Knotts in an arm bar and I'm yelling at him to the point where spit's coming out my mouth. Blood is pouring all over the sidewalk on the outside. Tony Garrix is brawling with the carver, and the carver looks like something out of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Tony just looks like a giant drunk man. <laughs> like, cops are sitting right there. They're like, holy fuck. What is this? Well, it was like the first time we went up to uh, um, uh, Rust Belt Pro up there in Monroe. Maddie was telling me he's like he goes watch this guy right here he goes he he'll he'll definitely get blood on you and it was Satu and ah. he say that and I looked down and I got blood on my pants I'm like how the fuck did <laughs> it's funny uh, the last death match I had was against Hardcore uh, I, you guys were there yeah uh, yeah I, that was a wild match <laughs> well but uh, the the, uh, the worst part about the into that right. though i got i got end up getting oh i can't remember who got thrown in my lap but literally like my right leg is soaked through with blood Jesus and we, we still got to drive back to ohio and we had already stopped at the dispensary on the way up there so and this is before it got legalized in ohio and i'm sitting there going i'm going to jail tonight and Matt's <laughs> at me. And he's like he's like yeah probably he's we get pulled up <laughs> 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 it's like, why are you covered in somebody else's blood? Why is there drugs in the trunk? What, what's going on? <laughs> What'd you do? This is a oh, felony. Don't worry, it's not mine. That doesn't help. <laughs> no, uh, that that night uh, at True Wrestling Underground, I had that match with Hardcore, and afterwards, I had a giant gash. Yeah, in, I see uh, that. You my arm. Cut wide yeah. open. Yeah. No, I, I lost quite a bit of blood from that. And it wasn't until, like, the adrenaline wore off and I was outside and Randy West was bandaging my arm. And all of a sudden, like, I got real woozy. I lost vision. And I just put my hand out. And I'm like, hold me. And it's sad, too, there. And he does nothing. He just, like, grabs my hand and guides me to sitting down. And Randy, like, cussed him out and everything, but now it's a little running joke between me and Satu, where I'll see him or I'll say something to him on social media and just say, hold me, and just we'll both laugh. So, uh, who, who who is your idol? Who, who, who got you? Oh, Mick Foley. Mick Foley? Mick Foley is my all-time favorite. Him and Terry Funk, those, those are my... Two all-time favorites. Oh yeah, that's that's like, two, two really good favorites right there. I mean, uh, I do spinning toe holds. I do uh, double arm DDTs. I've done the whole bang bang elbow drop in my matches, but yeah, no, like they were just characters. Characters that like they weren't per se the greatest wrestlers, wrestlers, like, technically. Yeah, they aren't. But they told great stories and were great characters. They made you believe. Oh, yeah. T Terry Funk, I mean, yes, he retired, like, 80 times. But... Yeah. You, you, That's awesome, though. You got behind him in everything. You know, and... It's funny going back and watching some of these old, old episodes where he was the villain... Or he's the heel, you know, and you're just like, I can't see him as the heel now because he's always been Terry <laughs> Funk, the, 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 the icon, the, the hardcore icon. Because we've Funk. seen too much behind the curtain of Terry. Yeah. Like, we know he's a sweetheart. Like, now, oh, like back then, if you were watching him, yeah, he's calling everyone egg sucking dogs. Yep. Like, uh, I actually had a tag match with these two Texans recently, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to make fun of them for being from Texas, but I'm also going to pay tribute to one of the greatest Texans of all time. 
So, like, we're making fun of, like, can they read? Like, are you smart enough to read, you dumb Texans? And we're like, can you read this? And I turn around, and on the back of my shirt, it says, Cold World Sucks Eggs. So, it was a fun little souvenir. I sold the shirt that night. But, yeah, no. I love Terry, Mick Foley, and Terry Funk. Like, if I can pay tribute to them, I usually do in a match. Like... They're my go-tos. No, no. And PSAs. I love PSAs. I love Freebirds. I love Freebirds. I, I, there, there was an interview, uh, I think, with Undertaker, and he gave, like, the top five tag teams of all time. And I'm just like, the hell are the Freebirds, man? Yeah. <laughs> Terry Gordy, Jimmy Garvin, and uh, PSAs. That's my favorite combination of the Freebirds. Oh, yeah. Well, they were, they were, what was it? I can't remember who replaced, uh, oh, Buddy, Buddy. Yeah. Yeah. I was sitting there trying to think that and I had to. Um, so do you have any, since you've only been in the business for a couple of years, do you got anybody who's like your, um, I guess your go-to person that you, you go to for info or, uh, like, you know, advice? Uh, so if I'm ever like in a dilemma or need advice, I actually uh, reach out to Schwartzy. Uh, he's my go-to. Um, Schwartzy and Randy Hoodfoot, they have been like mentors. They are uh, to me in this business. They uh, They look out for me a lot. And uh, I know if I ever need someone to talk to, one of the three of them will be available to talk to. I, I'm not gonna lie, I, I have no idea, man. Schwartzy got that gimmick over. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I know. It's because that's Schwartzy. Yeah. Schwartzy's like that, like all the time. I love him to death. I, I, I love it. The first time I saw Randy, though, uh, Maddie was like, "Oh, that, that chick will beat the fuck out of somebody." And I was like, well, yeah, she, she she's, she's not tall. She's just beating the ever loving crap. Then we were, um, oh, it was her versus uh, Mickey Knuckles. And they kept trying was to use this Ruthless Pro Wrestling. What? Yeah. Was this at Ruthless Pro, like in the middle of nowhere, Michigan? Uh, it was the one where they were using the, the curved piece of like shower glass and it would not break. I think I was there for this. Yeah, I think I had my match with Schwartzy that night. I' pretty sure you did. This yeah, because like, yeah, everybody's yelling because she's just like hitting Mickey with that fucking glass yeah. and it's just not breaking, and we're like, "Fuck that glass!" No, I. There's been times where I've been around glass like that's how I got the gash on my arm. Yeah, that was a, a very unforgiving piece of glass. Now it was tempered, but it was one. The glass was from a sliding glass window. Mm -hmm. And, like, if you've ever looked at those in houses, those are really fucking thick. Like, the only way we knew it was tempered was after the match. There was a... We took it, and someone dropped a hammer. Just, like... And it shattered. It broke apart like tempered glass would, but it took a fucking hammer. Like... Yeah, I, I remember you coming up to us at the end. You're like, look! And you had that big gash. And then <laughs> later on, you, I saw the pit because it, it was all bloody when we saw it. And then you showed it later in when we got home. I'm sitting there scrolling through I, Facebook or Twitter or whatever. And you could see it. And it was like this big. And it was wide. And I'm like, oh, I could tore. Yeah, no, it took like a full month to fully heal. Like, I went and got... Uh, it was, uh, they did like partial sti stitching on it. They didn't fully close it because they were like, it's close to 24 hours. It could get infected if we do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so they did that. And then I waited, I think it was like seven days I had to wait before that I had to go back and have them take it out. I just cut them out and did that. But I kept wrestling and uh, yeah, it just reopened. And I was like, well, fuck. It's not as bad as it was before. But now you got now you got a big 
scar on there. You're like, oh, oh yeah. yeah, no, I got a huge scar. I I can't pull up my sleeve that far. But so have, have you, was that the worst one you've worst cut you've had? Uh, in wrestling, yeah. In life, no. <laughs> Uh, I have a big scar right on my forehead, actually, from when I was like a little kid. Uh, three years in a row, I bashed my head open. So, yeah, the, that's the worst scar I have. <laughs> Very prominent. It's funny, actually, Ron Mathis, like, he's like, I see you getting out there. And, like, he's seen photos and whatnot, and he's, like, seen me in covered in blood but he referenced the scar right here that's from when i'm like one two and three i'm like yeah getting them gigs <laughs> cutting deep there, there's nothing like fucking forehead man you cut your head that's something that bleeds like a fiend no matter how bad it is I, oh i know i got there was actually a match i had we did not plan for blood or anything. Uh, it was just going to be, you know, a pretty fun match, a little fun match. It was a pound town street fight, a little pound town match. It wasn't even called a street fight, but it was basically, it's a hardcore match, but sexy. It's sexy violence, no safe words, no rules. Uh, so we're having this match, and to start it off, we... We reenact this fight scene from uh, Cable Guy. You know what this means. We have to fight to the death. <laughs> <laughs> so we do that with chairs. <laughs> and I doing it, I remember the first time we smashed chairs together, my finger just, uh, which it was, the, it was this finger, just shooting pain and i was like "Ooh, that hurt so i moved in and we continue we're going and uh we're brawling on the outside finally i'm on top of him and this is after he hits me with a clipboard and it just shatters it just and a little blood comes down and i'm like oh i'm bleeding but then i start seeing a lot of blood but there's not a lot of blood like i don't feel a lot of blood and i'm like where the fuck is all this blood coming from? Like, I'm covered in blood. Jake, he's covered in blood. He, I'm like, he's not bleeding. And I looked down, it was my finger. I cracked open my knuckle. And it literally was like, my whole skin right here was cracked open. You could look down into my knuckle. And it was just pouring blood all over the place. Like, uh, I have this big trouble in Little China shirt. It was white. Now, it it's clearly blood-stained. Like, it's a brownish hue around the whole thing. And I'm like, well, I'll wear that for death matches. I'll just keep getting that hue. But I love death matches. They're so much fun. Well. It, well, you you were talking about training and stuff like that. I can't remember. There's there's one guy. Everybody's like, he's so bad. He's but he's in here and he takes bumps. And uh, I, he wrestled Pondo the night we were there, and I cannot remember who it was. Big guy, and that that guy. I think I know who you're talking about. He doesn't need to be in a ring. <laughs> yeah. No. There's a lot of there's a there's a lot of people like that. And I hate to even say it, but even in the deathmatch community, that's why, like, I really wanted to get down wrestling, like, just the art of it. And, like, also, like, everyone should focus on their wrestling abilities before they take on, like, I'm going to specialize in a gimmick, like a gimmick match, a deathmatch wrestler, or I do dog collar match, whatever the fuck you do. Just know how to wrestle first. Yeah. Know how to tell a story. Know, know the psychology of what you're doing and why you're doing it before you just go out there and bash each other with weapons. Because anyone can do that. Anyone can fucking do that. 100%. And if you just let everyone in, like, what's the point of paying? So are you, are you still wrestling down in 
Dayton, well, it was closed right now, isn't it? Uh, ah, XVW. XVW. They're like under reconstruction right now. Uh, we lost the venue uh, at Odd Bodies, which sucked. And then the place we were at, I guess we lost that one too. Um, so they found a place that's in Fairborn, but I have no idea when that's going to open. Um, right now, me and Pete, the BBC, we are the tag team champs. Uh, have never defended it, though. So, you know. Yeah, it could, could be worse. It could be like, well, all right, we're doing a parking lot show, drag a thing out there. You're going well, to the show in the cold. We have access to a ring, and right now we're getting to the point where we at least want to defend it one time. So we're about to drag some fools that are, like, XVW sanctioned. And be like, we're defending our tattles <laughs> in this ring where we cannot do vertical suplexes, nothing off the top rope. We're going to wrestle. <laughs> but oh, be like them places up in Michigan we go where, you know, like you just like touch the ceiling from the ring. I was like, you can't no, do seriously off the rope. No. Well, I've heard that about the Fairborn location that the ceilings are pretty low and. That's upsetting. Uh, right now, I'm wrestling quite a bit with uh, APW. They're in Cincinnati more so. Um, Ascend Pro Wrestling, but also Supreme Wrestling over in uh, Madison, Indiana. It's very, uh, it's got an old school vibe. Like the whole arena looks like something like WCW Pro from like early 90s a studio match or something um but just traveling a lot trying to get out there more i know in the new year there's a couple places i'll be working for up in michigan um same with uh some places over in indiana like january uh towards the end january 27th i'm working um wrestle arts which they usually like Jack Vaughn wrestles there, Aaron Williams, Hoodfoot, Heather Monroe, like some pretty notable people, some pretty cool, cool people to share locker rooms with, and they have good crowds. So I'm pretty excited. But yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. It's, <clears throat> you know, you, you've got your whole thing going, you, you figured out the, you know where to go you got your weekends booked and stuff like that do you have do you have do you have a shoot job that you do during the week ha, i just got one just got one uh, yeah no the, there was a month where i did not have one i uh impulsively uh walked out on a job because i just hated it so much i was just like you know what i'd rather suffer so <laughs> hey um yeah but I just got a job. I'm working actually just at a pizzeria right down the street from where I live. Um, it's literally less than a 10-minute walk from where I live. They pay well. And uh, they're cool with me having, like, a wrestler schedule. So, yeah. Um, no, like, real career type of thing. I'm thinking about kind of uh, getting a fallback kind of thing going here soon. Um, cause wrestling ain't going to pay the bills forever yeah. or ever. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I'm just doing little work here and there. Um, yeah, making pizza. I'm a, <laughs> I got in the car with a, so right now I'm in four different active tag teams, officially four different. It was three just the other day, but. Uh, now I, uh, one of my tag team partners, uh, Creed Costello, were the move makers. Um, I went to get in the car and, uh, I called him something. I called him like little bitch or something. And he's like, yeah, is that right? Pizza boy. <laughs> and uh, I just started laughing. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, you got me. I'm a pizza boy. Hell yeah. Anyway, it's good that's pizza. My, that's what you get. That's my new gimmick. I'm the pizza boy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
extra large sausage. Would you like? Yeah, it's what you need totally to do. do it. Bring the pizza in at the at like crotch <laughs> yeah. level, and like I brought you an extra large sausage. This is Pound Town's Pizza Boy. <laughs> oh shit, that's great. Yeah, I got I got Pound Town pizza for you, pee pee. I got some pee pee for you. Yeah, it'd be great. I could do it, no problem. You'd be the you'd be the Pound Town Pizza Parlor. The three. Pizzas. What I. <laughs> I can do any gimmick. You you give me it, I'll make it work. <laughs> have you have, have they ever like just given you like the like the the drizzling shit gimmick for a day? Like for no, but the wildest gimmick I've ever had to do was uh, Texas mascara. It was for A two W, and uh, they wanted me to be Leatherface, and I was like, okay, like. How do you want Leatherface that like and I told them my idea of Leatherface. I'm a big Leatherface fan. It's my favorite horror franchise. It's my favorite horror movie is Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original one. Um but I told them, well, Leatherface kind of has the mind of a prepubescent teenage boy who just is horny. So I was like, I'll be sexy Leatherface. <laughs> And so I went and I went and bought a Moo Moo from Walmart. I cut it up so it was kind of like just this ratty dress looking thing. I had an apron. They gave me, uh, it was Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, uh, the mask from that. But it was a shitty like latex one. So we taped it. And it just kept, uh, what it kept doing is, so we cut a little hole in it too. And it kept falling down during my... And this was a match with Randy West, by the way. Uh, <laughs> so during my match, whenever I would hit something, I would pull my mask up and go, ah! <laughs> This is actually when I met the guy, uh, Piss Jug Mike. And what? <laughs> they, they thought I was hilarious, him and his crew. And at that uh, Ruthless Pro show, I gave him a lap dance. Yeah, no. Yeah, that was the... Pro I have also had to work uh, at a place where they wanted me to be terrified of clowns. Like, phobia levels. Like, I see a clown, I start screaming. And I'm like, okay, let's do it. And so we have... The their champions are clowns. So we've worked with them twice or something like that. And uh, every time Pete has to calm me down to overcome my fears, but like I get scared in the match. And like one of the things I keep saying every time we would work is clowns are killers. Clowns are killers. Because I'm referencing John Wayne Gacy. I'm just mm -hmm. like, that That would be my fear. <laughs> they're going to they're gonna fuck me and kill me. They bury you in a crawl space under their house. <laughs> like I don't trust them. <laughs> I, I I I've said this because we used to always have the joke. I was like, I've never been afraid of clowns, but there's something inherently wrong with clowns. <laughs> yeah, no, it's weird. Like, uh, have you ever seen the movie Shakes? Yeah, the the one with uh, Bobcat or no? Yeah, yeah, Bobcat Goldthwait. Yeah. Yep. That movie, uh, my old boss, he works in kitchens. He's like Charles Bukowski if he was funny. But uh, he told me to watch this movie, sent it to me, made sure that I watched it. It's one of the funniest things ever. I'm like, I would love to see a movie like that, but wrestlers. Everything. It's a wrestler's world. See, at one point, I, I, I wrote a script for a wrestling movie. And it was 100% kayfabe. So there's no... The characters are actually the characters that they portray. Yes! And so there's no no behind-the-scenes stuff. And literally, it was like, you know, I was making fun of, like, you know, Duke the Dumpster Jerosi, the T.L. Hopper. Because they're literally a plumber that has a... Well, like, so my buddy Creed Costello, his gimmick is he's the bookie sensation. He, he's he knows the odds. He's got his little black book with all his bets, and I'm like, you know how fucking cool that is. You're a bookie that wrestles. You keep bets, but you're also you. 
It's not like you're a wrestler who's a bookie. You're a bookie who's a wrestler. Like, even when you're wrestling, you're taking bets. Like... Because yeah. that's what Duke the Dumpster Dorsey was. He was a he wasn't a wrestle a dumpster man that wrestled. He was a wrestler that was a dumpster man. Like <laughs> that was his way of life. Well, th- th- what would be hilarious with with the uh, um, the bookie is like get thrown out of the ring. And like go up there and take bets on people around the ring before you get back. Oh, that would be so good. Well, I told him something akin to that is like, so sometimes he'll, he's part of the BBC. Uh, Mm -hmm. So sometimes if me and Pete are tagging and he's there, he will come and be our manager or ringside. I was like, you should start taking bets on who's going to win. And, like, this would be a fun way for fans to interact, I think. Because people would start betting. I yeah. definitely think. But, oh. Be like, who's going over? Weird here? how you would divvy up the winnings. Nah, fuck it. We'll turn heel every time and just take the winnings. Yeah, t- just heel, take the money, kick them out. <laughs> <laughs> well, me and so uh, I worked a match with Remington at Cincinnati Pride uh, a couple months ago, November. They did a show at Rheingeist, and uh, we had this match, and they had drag performers during the show, and they encouraged tipping the wrestlers too. Mm-hmm. So after we worked our match, I was exiting, and I looked around, and I see $2 someone just holding up a couple bills i'm like oh and then i see more i see more and rim sees what i'm doing so he starts doing it too we're just grabbing all this money we walked away with a total of 86 dollars just just in tips and i was like holy fuck i wish this was every show so so did you make more in tips or in the match (laughs) uh so the tip with the split out, I made more from the match. But if it wasn't split, if we made 86 each, I would have made more from the tip out. So I, 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 I've always got to ask this. Have you ever had uh, 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 like a nightmare scenario going to go oh, wrestle yeah. somewhere? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a place, and, like, I see my friends working there now, and it seems like they're doing a little better or what have you. I still don't like them. I hate them to death. I'm not going to say who it is, but, like, I fucking hate them. Uh, They reached out to me. They were booking two of my buddies. They saw me work at a show in Indiana. They're based in Michigan. Uh, They reached out to me, the, the booker and owner. And they're like, we want to bring you in. Uh, here's what our budget is. Like, this is, I had just br- probably six, seven months in. So I didn't really have a rate per se. And uh, I was just like, okay, cool. And they told me they wanted me to be involved in this angle. And because it's a fair show, they're running two events. And I was going to be working this guy in the next show and like, Yada, yada, yada. Well, I get there, and it's turned to I'm going to be in this squash match with one of the bookers, and I'm going to be in a battle royal. And I was like, okay, whatever. Like, I'm I'm annoyed, but whatever. But then what really pissed me off is, one, the squash match, he's like, you don't have to bump for anything. Well, he didn't tell the ref the finish, and then he dropped me on my head. And I was just like, fuck you, dude. And uh, later on, when we're all getting paid out, um, he paid my buddy, my two buddies. And he's like, do you got cash out? I'm like, yeah, I do. He's like, I'll get you later today. I was not paid until a week later. And I was very upset about it. I was just like, man. You know, driving to Michigan is not just, like, a little drive. No. So, yeah. I was pretty upset. That was a horrible scenario. 
Well, uh, Ron told me about the horror story. He goes, yeah, he goes, when he f first started getting into deathmatch wrestling, he goes, uh, uh, he was wrestling uh, Mox, and he goes, yeah, he goes, uh, you want to go to CZW with me and wrestle? And he's like, yeah. And he goes, ah, oh, give some money. They get all the way over there. He does his match, and he goes out and Hyde hands him 20 bucks after he drove all the way to Jersey to wrestle, and he got 20 bucks. <laughs> I would have been pissed. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, there's – so, like, I've done it where I have gone on trips where I thought there would be opportunities, but there were not. And they hurt me very hard financially. I do not recommend people to do that now, uh, just because of my experience. Uh, yeah. Don't go on trips unless you're financially sound and or have a booking. So, you just, like... Oh man, they're wrestling over here. I'm gonna go ahead and see if they'll book me for the day or anything. Is that what you I did? I drove. I drove some people, oh. and uh, with the the possibility of working one of the shows that was happening that weekend, and it just didn't work out. And I did not end up working. Um, and it was just it hurt. It drained me financially because. Gas was taken care of. It was just having to eat. And I was out there for three days. So, like, food and just living costs money. Yep. Oh, so, shit. yeah. That, yeah. that was a shitty situation. Now, do, you have a, do you have a favorite person to wrestle? Oh. Um, so, I really enjoy wrestling Jacob Rose. He's a dude out of uh, Cody Hawk's uh, training. Um, we're trained by the same guy, but he's been doing it for a few years longer. Um, just always have great matches with him. Um, love working with Theo Strong. He was trained by James Avery. He's out of, like, the Columbus area. But, again, every time, have stellar matches with him. Um I really enjoy working with Remington, even though it was once. Same with Schwartzy and Randy. Have I've done that one match with Randy, but also had a tag match with her. Um, DD Trash, really enjoy working with them. But uh, yeah, I would say probably my favorite person to well, and Jake Jake Shepard. I'd say my favorite person to wrestle is probably Jacob Rose. Just, I know, like, we will have a really good wrestling match. Now, do you have somebody that, you don't have to say names, is there somebody that you hope you never get in a ring with again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That bad, huh? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Just yeah. goes back to people, like, no matter how good you think you are, you should always be training. Always be getting better. Always be working on your craft. <laughs> See, you know, there's so many people, and I've seen that over the years watching indie wrestling and stuff. These guys go in, they got talent, but they get lazy. They get yeah. they, complacent. They, yeah, they get complacent. They're like, yeah, I can do it. Yeah, I can walk in. Well, I was a victim of it. I literally, so I lost, I lost half my body weight when I got into wrestling. I was 300 pounds. I dropped down to 170. Jeez. Like, and I was at, I was in great shape. I was doing well. And then I don't know what it was, but this past year, I just put on like a good amount of weight and. I'm upset about it. I mean, I can still wrestle. Like, I go to training and then, what was it? So, like, I guess right now, the people coaching me, like, when I do go to training, are Ryan Michaels and Aaron Williams. And uh, I was there one day, like, a week or two ago. It was me and probably five other people. But we all do our warm-ups, and then we all do a little chaining and some drills, and everyone's just totally blown. And I'm just, like, up standing in the corner, just, yeah, let's go! Because, like, 
I mean, you can be fit and everything, have a six pack, but that doesn't mean like you're wrestling fit. Yeah. Like, because it's all about working. Can right. you work? <laughs> Stop rushing. Look, look at some of the best wrestlers in the, that from back in the day, they were not jacked guys. They were not, no. you know, you know, even though you got I mean, like, my favorite was Mick Foley. And he looked like the dad that, like, everyone said, my dad can kick your ass. He was that dad. Yeah. It's kind of crazy because um, you talk about losing all that weight. Um, I, when I was getting, I just noticed one day, I was like, man, I'm getting fucking heavy. And I'm closing in on, like, 250 pounds. And I'm like, I can't do this. I couldn't keep up with my kid. I'm out, I fucking get winded doing everything. So I started working out. And eating better, yeah. and now I'm like I fluctuate between 165 and 170 now. And Yeesh. yeah, and yeah, now I, I, get, you know. I go to the gym three days a week. I eat better. It's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> it's wild what little differences will do. Like, and it's literally just changing your lifestyle and eating better. Like wrestling helped a lot with that because there was like a goal. But I got complacent. And now, like, I go to training about two times a week. I work out probably, I'm going to say three to five times a week because there are times I rely on my uh, tag team partner, Creed, for rides uh, because my car was repossessed recently. So, yeah, that sucks. But, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. still trying to stay fit. There you go. When it, now you can really stay fit. You ain't got no car. You can walk or bike everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. The closest plant fitness is probably like an hour walk from me. Be... Mm, about 40 minutes if I walk from my house to the nearest plant fitness. <laughs> I, have to, I have to think. I'm like, if I go this way and I can, yeah, I can be there in like no time. But, uh, and, and people give Planet Fitness shit. But you know what? I got, no. I got healthy at Planet Fitness. <laughs> yeah, no. It's a cheap way of staying fit. Okay, yeah. No, I'm not trying to do extreme deadlifts of a thousand pounds. Like, that isn't, that isn't my goal. Like, uh, everyone is operating on different levels. Yeah. So like everyone has different goals. Like you'll talk to some vets in the business where they just want to have consistent bookings within their area. When then you'll talk to people that are younger in the business and they're like, I want to travel and I'm willing to do anything. I don't, I don't care about the payday. And it's just because they're on different levels. They're going to get to an age where they're like, yo, I'm not traveling to bump fuck wherever and they're paying me 20 bucks flat like no because i know within my area i can make quadruple that and not have to drive over two hours do you so do you, do you like having like a consistent like place like when you were at xvw was like every tuesday yeah, yeah, I do like having a place that I can rely on for bookings, but I love traveling because I mean, like, that's how you, from what I've seen and like even experience, a lot of my bigger opportunities have come from traveling, um, just getting out there and being seen, um, even before you are actually working shows, like. I tell all the trainees, like, you should be hopping in, because that's what I did. Like, that's how I met John Wayne Murdoch. That's how I met Jake Chris. That's how I met Nick Manwa. It was because uh, Pompano Joe, I would hop in the car with him all the time. And sometimes I would even drive him. Uh, not sometimes, often. I would drive Pompano Joe to IWA shows when he would be working there. And Ian Rotten knew who I was. He, he called me Boston Joe. That's where I got my first payday because of, I forget his name, but he has big, uh, he big motherfucker and has glasses and did clean up all the time. Um, 
but he gave me my first payday ever in wrestling for helping clean up at one of their like super heavy deathmatch shows. But getting out there and just like traveling and making connections that way, like Zach Thomas of uh, Midwest Scum, when he saw me like in gear for a show, he came up and shoved me. He's like, I didn't know you were a worker, motherfucker. Like, <laughs> he's like, why didn't you say anything? I was like, well, I wasn't, I wasn't working. I was just traveling. But I encourage anyone and everyone, if they're in the business, get out there, travel. Like, if you want to make it a living, if you want to, like, try and have any, like, little amount of success, it'll be through traveling and working. Like, you're not going to make your money usually just working your home state not until you've been working there a while and have proved your worth because like guys like pompano joe or um ryan michaels matt taylor guys like that they can stay within ohio because they have been doing this for such a while and at such a high degree that they can make the amount of money that some of us need to travel out of state to make, they can make it in state because they've established themselves. Yeah. Well, you talk about Pompano Joe. It's, it's funny because you're talking about bad dudes earlier. Um, Jeremiah. And I don't know him. I don't know him. I've never like sat down and talked. I've talked to so many of the other guys from back in the day. Hello, and Jeremiah. I, he had such nuclear heat when he was at Rockstar, everybody had him. And I was like, you know, first part about it is he could legit be one of the nicest guys ever. And you would just be like, fuck that guy. <laughs> He's no, uh, Jeremiah, I love him to death. And I love watching those old Rockstar tapes because I'm like, they fucking hated you. Dude, they, they... He's so good at getting heat because like he just knows how to talk and really push buttons. And, like, really get under the skin of people. And, like, him... So, Pompano Joe... Like, Cody Hawk is who trained me. Pompano Joe is who, like, helped train me, though. Like, I credit him with training me just as much as Cody does. Like, he's the reason why I think I can roll around and actually wrestle. It's because of him. He's the man that made me think that. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, I I love the bad dudes. I love Jeremiah. I love Pompano Joe. Uh, Brian Barton is one of the greatest refs out there. Uh, I'm a huge Psycho Sam guy. Um, Psycho Sam Cody, I think, is one of the greatest workers of all time. And should be as hailed as such. So. Well, it, it's, it's such, I would say a shame, but there's so much good talent coming out of this area, out of Ohio. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, because the fact is there's so much good talent that I think that it's really hard to distinguish how good they are if they're all really good. Well, so, like, there is, like, have you heard of NWF Wrestling? Yeah. Yeah. So I love them to death. Is what they're but what they to? need to do is they need to post their shows. They need to stream them. Something. Because they have phenomenal wrestling. Like, they're wrestlers, storytelling, they kill it. And, like, the the big downfall is no one's seeing it unless you're going to the show. They have killer shows, too. Like, it's not like just a couple people showing up. Like, they have good turnouts. I went to one, and it's been it's been a long, long time. Um, oh, jeez. There, I don't even know if this guy's still he he comes out in like the 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 um, gladiator helmet from Gladiator, the Maximus's helmet. Oh, Titan. Yeah, he that wrestled. I remember him wrestling. I couldn't tell you the rest of the card, but I remember him. Just, he stuck out because of the gladiator helmet. You know Jack Vaughn, right? Which one? Jack Vaughn. Have you heard of him? He does all the TikToks. 
No. Has the mustache? Don't think so. Maybe. Okay. Well, he he originally wrestled at NWF out of there, but his name was Muldoon. Abyss is from there. Yeah, okay. Yeah. There is uh Carl Anderson. Um uh the guy who's kind of making waves right now is Jordan Clearwater out of the NWA. He he looks like a Ken doll. <laughs> Like just looks like an action figure or something, G.I. Joe or some kind of manufactured human being. There, there there's certain guys that, that don't look they're they're either A too jacked and they you, you know they can't wrestle for shit because they're too big. Or you, <laughs> or, you, or, you, or you get the guys who are, are ripped and they don't look human. They they have you um Seen Dalton uh, McKenzie? Maybe the name. He's a newer wrestler, but uh, he's he's really good. But he is unbelievably jacked. Like rivals, like uh, Ultimate Warrior or Lex Luger from back in the day. But he can wrestle. He's a great wrestler and really funny guy. I wrestled a match with him, and he put went over to, like, be a heel, be a dick, and try and stick his gum on me. But I just ate it, because I'm the queer Billy. You don't, you don't know Pound Town. <laughs> and then I got in the ring, and I got him in a headlock. And I went to put it in his mouth, and he's like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> so he moves, and it gets in his hair. <laughs> and after the match, he's like... There's fucking gum in my hair. I'm like, that's what you get for squirming. That was a really just funny, stupid, funny match. The end of the match was uh, I was in a sleeper. And what woke me up was the smells, the tantalizing smells of uh, this wood fire pizza from this wood fire pizza truck at the show. And Creed, there's a great photo where you just see my hand reaching out for it, and you see the pizza on the wood paddle in frame. It's like something out of like, like a uh, god and whatever. The, the, the finger, finger with her. Yeah, it, it looked just like that. And I power up, hit Carson Drake with the jawbreaker, make the hot tag to pee. I powder and I'm just like, oh my god, where'd this pizza come from? <laughs> this is forget the match. And Pete gets fucked. And then I go into the ring and Pete's like, what the hell? But we lost. And I'm like, but we didn't. We got pizza. <laughs> and like, yeah, it was a big, big goofy time. It was a silly, goofy, but a lot of fun. Uh so do you do you have uh I, I know you're relatively young. 30 31? I'm 30. 30. Almost 31. Okay. You were May. You were, you were slightly younger than my oldest kid. Uh <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because I'm old as fuck. No. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I turned 50 in June next year, so I, I'm getting old. Um, no, I feel it, and my partner reminds me all the time. Just they'll be like, "You're thirty, you're old," and I'm like, "Yeah, well, go fuck yourself." <laughs> I, as I tell people, they tell me I'm old. I'm like, "Yeah, but I lived through more shit than you lived through in your entire life." <laughs> yeah, I've experienced life. Yes, I'm leveled up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a different level. You see, you're here. I'm yeah. here. But to those one of my favorite ones, I have, I have a guy who comes in. We talk wrestling at the, at the shop, and I was like, "Yeah," and he's like, "Give me shit." And he goes, "You know?" I was like, "Dude, I've been to WCW, I've been to ECW, I've been to WWF and WWE, been to Impact and TNA. I've been, it's like I saw this shit when it was good the first time. <laughs> I've seen it. This just repeats." I met Andre the Giant. No. Oh but, wow! Holy fuck! Uh, yeah, little kid. I mean, I was a kid. I, I was twelve, I think, and it was Hair Arena, and he was like meeting kids. That's the only people he'd meet. 
because he didn't want the, the adults who were, you know, weird would always take pictures. Yeah. Little kids were friendly and stuff. And uh, I walked around there. He was beating the kids. And I'm like, All right. I walked up to him. He's like, hey, man. <laughs> and he my head. I'm like, Jesus Christ, giant, giant. His, it's like it's like grabbing a toddler's head is what he did yeah. with my head. And I have a, I've, I've always had a big head. Even when I was a kid, I had a big fucking melon. And yeah. he's like, I'm like, um, and uh, the other one is uh, I've uh, um, I bought I went to go buy Ric Flair drinks at a strip bar. Oh hell yeah! And Ric Flair's like, no, you don't buy Ric Flair drinks. Ric Flair buys you drinks. And, and it was That's after sad. a WCW house show because the strip bar was only like a like a mile away from the uh, hair arena, and we went there. So yeah, oh yeah. But um, so um, I got to ask, what's the, what's the end game for GG? Oof. Ah, uh, really? My biggest goal is well, like the overall goal is I just want to be able to like live off of it. So like, I'm not necessarily looking to be on TV. I just want to have the the opportunities and the bookings that will like, if I can go work a weekend and I don't care if it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'm working and I'm traveling. If I can walk away where the profit from it is able to cover my rent, my bills. And that's just the first weekend. Like, hell yeah. That's like, that's living the dream for me. Um, Big crazy dream would be able to do death matches in Japan. That's like what's next, yeah, but you already answered me. I uh, really want to do death matches in Japan. Um, I, I, I just love death matches, and I think you know, really give me the opportunity to go nuts, and it'll be a whole different thing. <laughs> so, um. You, you can you can ignore this uh, if you want. Uh, how did you, you you got a partner now, right? Your relationship. Oh yeah, no, yes. Um, how was that with the wrestling? So I started dating him uh, literally right before I debuted. So he's been with me the whole time that I've been doing this. Um, he is not a fan of wrestling, but he doesn't hate it. Like he just it. Doesn't fully interest him, but what does, and what does capture his attention is deathmatch wrestling. Uh, I took him to one of the shows live, and this was before I was wrestling. I was just helping out. And uh, it was Ruthless Pro Wrestling up in Michigan, and it was Randy West versus Remington Roar in this match using Cactus. And he's like, I just remember seeing that and like, what the fuck is this? And he came to uh, the Cincinnati Pride show and brought one of his friends. And, like, his friend had never watched wrestling. But they watched the show, and they're like, it was a lot of fun. And I'm like, yeah, wrestling's a lot of fun. <laughs> but, yeah, no, uh, he, he knows, he's supportive of my passion. Um, but, yeah, he's, he doesn't have a favorite wrestler. If he were to pick a favorite wrestler, I think I pressured him once and he said Randy West. So, <laughs> and I was like, well, that's a good one. Yeah, Randy All right. Badass. Well, yeah. So, fuck out of people's. <laughs> yeah. You know, other people are saying Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair. My boyfriend says Randy West. <laughs> I'm weird. Mine's always been Arn Anderson. I fucking love Yeah, that's him. a good one, though. So. That's a good one. Oh, My favorite wrestler to never win the big one was William Regal. Is real William Regal. Holy shit, he's never did, did. No. I thought he had the... Not What's even ECW. For a minute. Maybe I'm yeah. Wrong. Shit. He made the television title seem like the heavyweight title when he was in WCW. He made that title important. Any title he ever had, he made feel important. Even the European title. Oh, yeah. That was like, a great run. William yeah. Regal is one of the greatest of all time. 
If I made him out Rushmore, he would be on it. Well, I think his problem was, was uh, even him, he admits it. He goes, if I'd have been clean and sober, he goes, I would have been a champ. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, he says that, but then you look at Ric Flair. Some people are better functioning. I mean, I, I tell people I was a, I was a fucking alcoholic for years. And there's people who's like, no way, you were. Co-. I was like, dude, I was a very high functioning alcoholic. Man, I went to work every day. I didn't right. miss shit. I was, you know. And some people can do that. And there are some people. I'm not that- gonna lie. I'm a bit of a party monster, but I watched the Dark Side of the Ring on uh, Matt Bourne. And I'm a big Doink fan. I'm a big Matt Bourne fan. I love Portland wrestling. Like, some of the storylines they told are, like, some of the most, like, wild (laughs) storylines. But uh, I watched that, and I was like, holy fuck. No one should live like Matt Bourne. So, yeah. It's a very cautionary tale. Okay. So, I I I gotta ask the last big question. Dream match. Oh. Who would you love to wrestle? Um, right now, who would I absolutely well like all just like I don't know, the the way I'm looking at it viewing it is like who do I think I would have the best match with? Um you know, honestly, John Moxley. Uh, just because me and him share a trainer. Uh, we were both trained by uh, Cody Hawk. But a more realistic one um, would be Casanova Valentine, um, Hoodfoot, um, Alec Price. Um, because I've met him like genuinely in a parking lot, uh, and shared a joint and it was, I was like, this guy's cool. (laughs) Uh, Dale Patrick's, I mean, there's a lot of matches I really want that I would really, really want to have. Uh, like I had recently a match with Josh Crane and that, like, I've always been a fan of independent wrestling and because like I waited until I was older I've been watching Josh Crane. So when I had that match, I was like, holy fuck. This is wild. Uh, The fact that I roll, like tonight, after this, I'm going to go up to Hamilton and roll around with Aaron Williams. I consider Aaron Williams a good friend. And like, that blows my mind. Like, uh, Casanova Valentine, I befriended before I even got into wrestling. Um... Same with Hoodfoot. Um, I would love to have a match with Necro Butcher. That's a dream match. The current Necro Butcher? I'll throw fucking hands. I'll throw hands. The Mega mega Butcher? Yeah, no. I I will be the Queer Billy of Poundtown, USA. He can be the Mega Butcher. And I will wear my red, white, and blue fucking overalls. And at some point, I'm going to strip them off and be queer as fuck. (laughs) Be like, fucking let's throw hands. I know I'm a fucking tiny human being compared to you. But I love you. I love Necro. The first time I met Necro, he's I didn't realize who he was. And Maddie was like, fuck, that's Necro. I'm like, what? He's (laughs) no hair. He had the big fucking handlebar oh, mustache yeah. going on. He was in a suit, and he was um, the producer for a rock star slash impact show. Okay, yeah. And, and no, he I'm has like, an incredible mind for the business. Yeah. And uh, it's Madman funny. Pondo is another dream match for me. I've always been a fan of Madman Pondo. Actually, uh, I brought up because uh, I recently had a picture with Shadow WX, and uh, Madman Pondo was the one he, like, I shook his hand, and I waited till he was, like, all situated, because I was just, I don't like bothering people in wrestling that I like. 
it's just like I'm like no no that's not professional so but then I was like all right hey nice to meet you I'm a big fan glad to have you in the locker room share a locker room and as I'm walking away Pondo's like hey you want a picture I'm like oh my god yes <laughs> and so like it's fun because I got this really awesome picture with this deathmatch legend taken by another deathmatch legend and I've just always uh ever since I was a kid my introduction to Madman and Pondo was backyard wrestling the video game yep. And when I told my sister about how he took the picture, she's like, wait, Madman Pondo from Backyard Wrestling? And I was like, yes, the Madman Pondo from Backyard Wrestling. <laughs> it just, it popped me so hard. But I would love to have a match with him. So, um, I, I guess I should have said the next question. I got, I got um, this could be, I guess, the last question. Kind of. Um, any advice for people wanting to get into wrestling? Uh, do it. If you want to do it, do it. Uh, it's hard. Be ready for that. Uh, it's shady. The business can be very shady. It will make you very upset at times. But just commit to everything that you do in it. Um, literally, your first day you're going to suck. You're just going to be drizzling shits, but the more you stick with it, the better you're going to get. And who knows, they can be a natural or they could just not be, but it's something that anyone can learn. Like uh, wrestling is for anybody, but it is not for everybody. I, I like to put it that way because there is definitely because of like how shady the business can be, honestly. Uh, sometimes, you know, like you got to be able to take a punch. Like I like was in a match and a kid clocked me straight across the jaw, fucking walloped me. I did not murder him. <laughs> no, <laughs> we still rocked and rolled, but like. You just have to have a cool head. You got to have thick skin uh, and be able to commit. You know, if you can't do a front roll, doesn't mean you can't be a wrestler. Um, but yeah, just commit. Just commit. Shit or get off the pot. There you go. <laughs> Literally, so Brian Barton yelled that at me on the way back from an IWA show. He's like, you just got to fucking commit, George. Oh, Gigi. My name's Gigi. Shit or get off the pot. <laughs> and, right. and now, a lot of times, like if people are having trouble with something, or even myself, that will ring in my head, and I'll yell, "Shit or get off the pot." I've said that for a completely inappropriate and wrong reason, <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't a guy shit about getting off the pot. It was a uh, fucking annoying dude that talking a bunch of bullshit <laughs> so all right where can people find gg jacobs at online uh, twitter instagram facebook literally gg jacobs it's like at gg jacobs 69 i also have a youtube gg jacobs 69 uh, there's a Bosom Buddies YouTube, there's a Bosom Buddies uh, Twitter, there's a Bosom Buddies Instagram, which is kind of, uh, it covers all tag teams underneath the Bosom Buddy umbrella. The Bosom Buddy Connection is a open tag partnership, so there are many tag teams within the Bosom Buddy Connection, um, like I'm in four currently active tag teams uh so but yeah uh gg jacobs at gg jacobs 69 i also have a brain buster tease account um with tons of merch yeah so yeah really you can find me anywhere and everywhere well, well i greatly appreciate you coming on here and hanging out and uh love to have you again and we might yeah. have like a wrestling 
episode where we bring in a bunch of wrestlers and talk war stories and shit like that. Oh, that'd be awesome. But uh, um, before I go, I'm going to shut this down and we'll go off record here in a second. And, you know, I'll ask you a couple questions, but um, that's it. Um, thank you for coming by. It's been a blast. I can't wait to see you again in person because you Hell are yeah. fun fun person and you're awesome and yeah. <laughs> can't wait to hang out with you again so oh, and, yeah. and, and maddie will probably be with me next time i was hoping to go to wrestling up in michigan next week week after next but i don't know if that's going to happen so maybe it could happen i don't know y'all should come to wrestle arts on january 27th where's that one at Indiana. Indianapolis. Indianapolis. Okay. So, but it's at the Irving Theater and it's going to be a kick ass show. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to end this here.